Oh, hello. Today we are talking about the best and worst series that I read in 2020, or at least entries in those series. And this is, I think, the third year I have done this tag. It's a tag I created, and, and it's been fun seeing year over year how the questions do and don't apply to my series reading. And coming up with my answers for this year's, I think what I realized is that it really solidified my feeling that next year, that 2021 needs to be a year of catching up with or like making progress on series that I already have going because I feel like I didn't finish that many series this year in terms of things that are already out. I did catch up on a few that I have been wanting to catch up on and you know I, I did a lot of series reading <laughs> but I feel like I didn't finish that many series. So I think that's my overall takeaway, which maybe will come out in the, the questions as we go through them. But anyway, this is 17 questions in this tag that I do each year to celebrate the best and worst of series reading, because sometimes I feel like in our end of the year list, um, kind of series as a whole sometimes get buried because we're only talking about maybe like an individual book in a series and not what it has done as a whole. So anyway, I just find that this is a helpful way for me to celebrate the fact that I do read a a lot of serialized fiction, and sometimes they don't necessarily rise to the top of my end of the year list, though this year that's not as much the case. So this is a tag that helps me make sure that I feel like I'm representing how good series are and how much I love them. So without further ado, let's dive into the first question. Question number one is, what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress? So not all the books in the series are out yet, but you caught up with it. So I had three that came to mind for this one. First, I'm going to say uh, the Immortals After Dark series by Cresley Cole, though honestly, it's technically still a work in progress. We were supposed to be getting another book this year, but like Lucy and the Football, it still didn't come out. And I frankly don't know if it ever will. So maybe I finished this series this year. And if so, I would say it would be my favorite I finished this year. Maybe, I don't know, but whatever. So I would say that, and technically I've caught up on Immortals After Dark. I also caught up, and I'm actually ahead because I read an arc for this series for next year, the Highlander series from Lindsay Sands, which is historical romance. I should say this is paranormal romance. Uh, Highlander is historical romance from Lindsay Sands and I am caught up through 2021. So I'm actually ahead in that one. And then uh, I also caught up with Ice Planet Barbarians and Ice Home from Ruby Dixon, which is sci-fi romance. So I had three big romance series that I caught up with this year and I felt like that was a big achievement. Number two is the best work in progress series you are still catching up with. A series that I have not yet caught up with that is still being published in some form. And this is, both of these are a little bit of a cheat because really both of these are still being added onto in spinoff series. So maybe this isn't, maybe this doesn't count. I don't know. But the two that came to mind for me were Reluctant Royals from Alyssa Cole. So I've read, I think, three books in that series and there's three for me to catch up with. So I am looking forward to doing that next year, but I absolutely loved A Princess in Theory this year. It was just wonderful. And then uh, the Percy Jackson series from Rick Riordan. I really, I started it this year. I'm on the third book right now. And there are more books coming out in the spinoff series, I think. I don't think that those are over yet. I may just be totally wrong. <laughs> but I think both of those have spinoffs um, that are still coming out. And I've really enjoyed what I've read so far from the sort of camp half-blood verse from Rick Riordan. And I'm looking forward to continuing on uh, with those until I catch up. And then number three is what is the best first book in a series you read this year? Which was a very easy question for me because my favorite first book in a series was also, it's a up in the air for being my favorite book overall period this year. But that was Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I love this book so much. It is high epic fantasy set in pre-Columbian South American type culture. Ugh, I just love Rebecca Roanhorse. She's an autobi author for me at this point. I also started her Race to the Sun uh, series this year. I don't know if there'll be more. I hope so. But I really enjoyed that. I love her Six World series. And I love this book. This is my favorite first book in the series period. And I actually read a lot of really good first books and series this year. So so this was, it wasn't like there were no other good ones out there for me to have picked from my reading this year, but this is the one that is very clearly the winner. Next, we've got, what is a first book in a series you read this year that you think should have just been a standalone and not a series? So I've got two picks of books that I think, the first books in series that I think work perfectly well as standalones, and I actually quite like where they ended up. One of them I'm pretty sure I'm not going to continue on in, and one of them I may or may not. The one I'm pretty sure I'm not going to continue continue on in is the Mistborn series, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, because I was very happy with the overall rise and fall of action in this. I definitely see where there's possibilities of where the series could go, but I honestly don't feel a big push to continue because I'm pr 
pretty happy with the arc that I got. And I've heard such conflicting things about how people feel about books two and three in the series that I just I kind of don't think it's worth it if I'm as happy as I am with where this individual book ended up. So that one came to mind. And then the other one that I may go ahead and read the next book because it's only a duology. So it's only committing to one more book is the next book with um, a memory called Empire. So that's the one I'm thinking of by our Katie Martine, which I very much enjoyed. This is a sci fi political intrigue machinations kind of thing in space. And it was really fun. It had a lot of interesting things to say about like colonialism and what does and doesn't make a person or consciousness. It was just really, really good. But I actually really kind of liked how all of the political machinations uh, resolved themselves by the end of the book. So I may go ahead and read the second book since it's only a duology, but I would be perfectly fine just leaving that book kind of where it is. Number five is what is your most overhyped series of the year? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, honestly, maybe Miss Bourne could have qualified for this, but I'm gonna say Red, the Red Rising series from Pierce Brown. Now, I have heard from multiple people that even if you don't like the first book, the subsequent books dramatically improve in quality. I think the reason I want to call it overhyped is because I, I really did have problems with that first book with Red Rising itself. Like, I had real writing issues with it in terms of how melodramatic I felt the writing was. And then also, in terms of it being overhyped, I was expecting it to be much more unique than I found that at least the first book to be. Again, I've heard that maybe the series it gets better and more distinct, but I just felt like it was overhyped in the sense of it felt kind of like old, like old news to me. It didn't feel that fresh. So I don't know. For me, that was most overhyped. Okay, moving on. I know everybody hates both of my possible answers. Oh, and then going into another answer everybody will hate is number six is what is a series you DNF this year? So I'm gonna say two. First of all, I'm not gonna continue in the series that starts with The Awakening from Nora Roberts, just because I felt like that first book was just such a prologue. It's 500 pages of a prologue. And as much as I love her writing, I just don't feel like I can commit to two more 500 page books like that if there's not going to be more action going on. So I think, you know, if you're willing to wait and see how those subsequent books go, like there's definitely promise there. I just think I'm, I've got so many other things from her I want to read. It's just not a priority for me. If I end up doing a reading everything she ever wrote project, I guess I'll end up having to go back and read the subsequent books. But for now, I'm going to let it lie. And then, um, I read this book back in college and then I tried to reread it this year and DNF'd it because I really would like to get into the series and I do think I will watch the adaptation that's coming out. But the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan, the writing, I mean, as insofar as one can be objective about such things in this book is bad. Like I just don't, I cannot imagine reading book after book after book with that writing. Like I just, I literally cannot imagine a world where I would do that. So I may, I may encounter the story in visual media form, but I, the books, no, not not going to continue on with those. Okay, moving on before I get stoned by an angry mob. <laughs> okay, next we have what is your favorite series finale of the year? Well, least favorite series finale was definitely the roundup that uh, to the Truly Devious series from Maureen Johnson. I thought that was a real letdown. But my the only series that I finished in totality, like not just caught up with, but finished, that I felt like was worth even talking about is the Puppy War series, which ends with The Burning God. And I absolutely love this book. I think that this is the best of the three in the trilogy. And I think that this was a very tear jerking, but appropriate ending. So I felt like this was a series that very much stick the landing. So definitely the clear winner for best series finale of the year for me was this. And then best, the biggest cliffhanger I had in a series was also a little tricky to decide because it, I didn't feel like this was a year where I had anything where I was just like, <gasps> like, I can't, like, I have to have the next book now because what happens? I don't think. The two that come closest, I would say, is Alpha Knight by Nalini Singh, but just because everything that's going on in the world is really getting ratcheted up. I know that Nalini Singh always finds ways to satisfyingly resolve the conflict she sets up, but right now I'm just like, I don't see how this is gonna end well. <laughs> for the people still in the signet, because things are looking pretty grim. So I'm gonna say this one. And then I will say that the, the epilogue to Emerald Blaze definitely has a sort of like dun 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 kind of moment to it that I saw coming and I have a theory about. So it didn't necessarily like totally shock me. It's more that it was like, hmm, okay, I do think that this is moving in the direction I thought it might be. So that's exciting. And I'm definitely, sadly, the next book in this series is not gonna come out 
in 2021, it's going to come out in 2022. But I'm very much looking forward to it because very intrigued to find out how all of that wraps up. So I would say those are the two that are the closest qualifiers for Biggest Cliffhanger. And then next one is favorite spinoff series you read this year. And again, it was kind of hard to like really nail this down because I don't feel like I have a lot of spinoff things on my TBR, but I haven't actually read like one that comes to mind is I'm waiting for How to Catch a Queen by Alyssa Cole, which is a spinoff from Reluctant Royals. I'm excited about that. But in terms of actual spinoff series that I read this year, I guess I would say the Corsair series from Ruby Dixon, which is a spinoff of her Ice Planet series. So I guess I, I would say that because I really did enjoy all four books in that some more than others I thought all four of them were like really like solid versions of what they were so I guess I would say Corsairs and then what is my most anticipated next book in a series that I read this year that is coming out next year so I want to give two shout outs for ones that I didn't technically read this year but I'm very excited about episodically the next Kiss Quotient book is coming out next year we had a year off in 2020 and The Heart Principle is is coming out in 2021. So I'm excited for that. And then also we are getting a very anticipated spinoff to Kate Daniels with her uh, adopted daughter Julie with Blood Air in January from Alona Andrews. I did read some of the epi like it's been released serialized on their website. I read a little bit of that this year. So I guess maybe technically it counts but that is I'm very excited for both of those next year. But in terms of a series that I read something in this year and I'm excited about a spinoff or release from it next year is uh, I read Tempest this year from Beverly Jenkins and the hero's sister Rain is getting her own book next year and it's called Wild Rain. So in the strictest terms of the question of a, a next book in a series from this year that's getting released next year, this is my answer and I would say Wild Rain because I am so confident I'm going to love that because Rain was such a great character in Tempest. I think that's going to be great. Then we get back to what is your favorite series that you finished this year and again I feel like well, okay, actually, I, there's two I will now say now that I'm thinking about it because I got an arc of one of these series. So I did technically finish both of these in one year. I would say Poppy Wars that I finished that series this year from RF Kuang uh, and definitely feel like that was a highlight. I also read all three Brown Sisters books from Talia Hibbert this year. So I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and Actor Age, Eve Brown. I read all three of them this year. So I would say these are my two favorite books that I finished this year. This one is serialized and this one's episodic. Okay, so those are good, good answers there. Next is specifically what's your favorite episodic series of the year? So one that you maybe didn't read all of, but I would still say that the three Brown Sisters books were definitely huge highlights episodically. I posted about this on Instagram, but I feel like each of these three books I read at a really low point in the year for me and all each time it was sort of a, a pick me up that I was very excited about. So this one doesn't come out until March, but it is so good. And I read it this fall. I read Take a Hint, Danny Brown in the spring. And it's one of my top five books of the year. It's so good. And then I read Get a Life, Chloe Brown uh, in February. So yeah. I finished this whole series. So that's definitely one of my favorite episodic series. And then one that I didn't read in totality this year, but I would say is is my other probably favorite episodic series of the year is Tommy and Tuppence by Agatha Christie. I finished reading all of Agatha Christie's works this year. And that included finishing up the last of her serialized detective books that I hadn't read, which were from Tommy and Tuppence. And while there was a definite low point, a very low point in that reading process, <laughs> like one of the worst books I read this year, I also just really enjoyed Enjoyed spending time with them and like really getting into their vibe in a way that I haven't before reading their books kind of in close timeline with each other. I finally sort of really felt like I understood what Tommy and Tuppence were about and just enjoyed especially I would say um, NRM was my favorite of those books and then followed very closely by Partners in Crime. Um, I just I really enjoyed seeing them as sort of like young things on the town getting into hijinks and shenanigans and then also seeing them as older people like with a little bit a little bit more of a serious tone fighting during World War II. So I enjoyed both of those experiences in particular. So I would put Tommy and Tuppence definitely on favorite episodic series of the year. And then for number 14 is what is a series that you finally bailed on after holding out for a long time? And I don't think I have done that this year. I will say as of this filming, I'm on the bubble with doing that with Fireblood by Ruby Dixon, that series, because the first two books, I'm just not sure about. The first one I really didn't enjoy that much. And the second one has 
much more promise. So it's gonna, I'm gonna keep going for another f book or two or three. We'll see. And I, the completest in me may just, since they're not that hard to get through, just read them all. I don't know. But I'm on the bubble with that one, but I haven't officially bailed on it yet. And then speaking of Ruby Dixon, the, the number 15 is, what is the series that you were most surprised that you liked this year? And that has to be Ice Planet Barbarians because I it, have been enjoying her Rizdiverse book. So I knew I liked her sci-fi romance, but I had avoided Ice Planet Barbarians because I knew of some of the on-page um, assault that happens in the first book. And I just thought that would be too much for me to get over. But actually I ended up being mostly happy with how that's handled, especially in subsequent books, looking back on it. And uh, I just absolutely had a wonderful time reading all of Ice Planet Barbarians and then reading all of Ice Home that has been released so far. So I would say those two, I mean, I liked it so much I did a full like hour long video about them. <laughs> so I really enjoyed those and uh, really enjoyed them as like a very bingeable series for the year. And I'm very surprised that that's sort of how things shook out because I also went on a binge of the Corsairs and the Shift series from Ruby Dixon. And as I mentioned, I'm working on the Fireblood series. So like it's been a full Ruby Dixon just like buffet around here. Then what is your most anticipated series to catch up with next year based on what you read this year? And one of these, I don't know that I'm going to catch up with. Actually, two of these I don't think I will fully catch up with. So let's mention those. One, I was so excited and intrigued about how much I enjoyed The Warden by Anthony Trollope because I have been told that this is the worst book in the series from Anthony Trollope and I really enjoyed my time with it. So that makes me really excited. I will not catch up with that series next year, but I definitely plan on making more progress with it. So that's exciting. And then again, I'm not going to fully catch up with Robin Hobb next year, but I definitely want to read at least two more in her Farseers or her Elderling series, specifically reading the next two in the Farseer trilogy. Yeah, I'm so excited to do that because I really, I don't know, I just, Assassin's Apprentice by her was just such a, it felt like such a cozy old school type of fantasy. It was just a delight. But my true, like what I'm fully going to catch up with next year, I'm going to say is the Scythe trilogy from Neil Schusterman. I've got up here, you can't see it, but up on my bookcase, I have the next two books in this trilogy. And I really enjoyed this as a YA dystopia. I felt like it had a real point of view to it that was distinct from other things I've read and, and felt fresh to me. So I'm, I'm very excited to see how that whole trilogy goes. So I plan on fully reading all of that next year. And then this is shameful, guys, because the next question is, what is a series that you meant to catch up with or finish this year, but you didn't? And I, I'm going to keep the exact same three answers that I had last year, which is the Hearthstone series from L. Catherine White, which is Pride and Prejudice, but with dragons. So like a fantasy, a high fantasy based on Pride and Prejudice. There's two more. I own both of them. And why haven't I read them? I don't know. So that I did make progress on the Winston Brothers series from Penny. Did I? No, that's not even true. I made progress on Knitting in the City, which I was supposed to finish this year and didn't. So that one. And then Winston Brothers, I also am trying to catch up with or finish in Penny Reed. And then I did make progress on reading Tracers, the Tracer series by Laura Griffin. And I think I've successfully identified which of the Tracers books I'm going to read and which ones I'm not. But I meant to just fully read all the ones I wanted to read and didn't this year. So I had the exact same answers last year, which again, to me is telling me I need to dedicate a little bit more time to actually catching up with series next year. And like, I think, like I said, 2021 in my vision right now is the year of the series. I'm gonna like really so much of what is on this bookshelf are sequels and the rest of series also on my Kindle. So like, I just want to spend more time doing that next year, I feel like. And then the last question is, what is a series you finished this year that you think the sum of its parts is greater than any of the individual books? And I'm again going to go to the Poppy Wars. I think that I gave the first two books four stars. I gave this four and a half stars, but I would give that series as a whole five stars. I think each individual book is telling an overall story that is stronger than any one of the entries. But they're all still really good. And yeah, that is this year's series tag. It did definitely cause some reflection for me of, of things that I need to do or how I want to kind of strategize some of my reading for next year. So that I think was helpful for me if for no one else. Uh, so yeah, I invite you if you would like to do this tag, you are certainly welcome to do so. All the questions are in the description box and that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And yeah, I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye!